Aloha, this is a very basic introduction to a pool system and how it operates. And we use this video uh, mainly to train new hires and or for the homeowner that wants to learn a little bit more about how their pool system works. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the circulation of the pool, how the water gets into the pool how it gets uh, from the pool to the circulating system. We're going to talk about proper water levels, autofills, uh, vacuum systems, and the valve workings uh, down in the room. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the filtration, what actually filters the water, and how the water gets uh, from the filter back into the pool. And again, there uh, there's a lot more information that one will be relayed here in this video, but again, this is just a very basic overview. To start, uh, keeping a pool clear is going to rely on getting water from the body uh, of, of the pool to the pump through a filter, whether it be a cartridge filter or a sand filter, and getting it back into the pool once it's been properly scrubbed. Though the way that the water gets back into the pool is from these little ports on the side of the pool, generally in the walls, the vertical walls. There are some systems that have these returns in the floor, but they are not extremely common. Generally, you'll find probably four to eight of these returns, depending on the size of the pool. In your average size pool, you'll find uh, four to eight of these returns in your walls. There are several basic ways that the water gets from the pool down in the uh, filtration system, starting with the main drain, which is what you see there, the circle. The skimmer port, and generally pools will have one to two skimmers. There's another one over there. And then if you have a vacuum, that'll also be considered a way that water will get from your pool into the filtration system and then back uh, into the pool through your returns that we discussed earlier. The skimmer ports are usually accessed through a port in the top of the pool deck. Down inside, there's a basket. The basket can be pulled out. You can see that we have a rock in this particular basket because that basket is not weighted down and we use the rock to hold it down. So when the pump stops and the water is not circulating, with vacuum and being pulled down into that port, uh, that vacuum usually keeps the basket from floating up. And when the pump is off, the basket has a tendency to just kind of float up on its own. So we put a large rock in the basket, larger than the diameter of the pipe that's underneath the basket so that there's no possible way that the rock could accidentally go into the plumbing. A lot of times, in the deck, you'll see a smaller round port similar to the one that I just showed you. And if you were to, it's held in place usually by two or three uh, set screws. And if you were to take those set screws out, you'd find an autofill. This is a much older pool, so there is no autofill. And uh, uh, we actually introduce water from the main line of the house down in the pump room, and I'll show you that later. Okay, so that's basically uh, uh, what you're looking at here at the pool. You've got your light which is uh, turned on either by a switch on the deck or on a timer down below in the room. Some swimming pools will have a shared system, what's called a shared system with uh, spas, uh, and other times they will not be shared systems and the spa water and the pool water are independent of one another in the way that they circulate, the way that they heat, and in the way that they're used. This is a uh, separate system. They are not connected in any way. Most of the shared systems that you'll see will have the spa actually built into the pool shell. And uh, depending on how you have it set, uh, the spa will share water with the pool on certain programs. The water will run over the edge of the spa and into the pool and from the pool into the spa. And you can separate the two so that the pool only is circulating within itself or the spa is only circulating within itself and that's all controlled by a network of valves and plumbing down 
in the pump room. But again, this is an older system. And part of the way that you can tell that it is not a shared system is because the spa is not connected to the main pool. And then down in the pump room, we have what I would consider a, a fairly simple system comparative to a lot that's out there. Certainly a little bit more pipe work than some of the, uh, the most basic systems out there. But when it's all said and done, uh, the way to break down your system is looking at your pump, which is that unit right there. That is your filtration system right here. And this is your chlorination system right here. Chlorination systems and filtering systems will vary slightly, but you'll get the general idea from, from this video. I think the best way to start breaking down the system is by showing you the pump. The pump is what pulls water from your pool and distributes it back into the pool. And the way to remember which is which is you have basically at the end of the day two pipes at your pump. One coming into your pump and one coming out of your pump. The horizontal pipe, this one here, always going in at a horizontal uh, into the pump is always going to be, uh, well, let's just say 99.9% .9 of the time is going to be your intake. The vertical is 99.9% .9 of the time going to be your discharge. Okay, water going back to the pool. Now it may make several uh, stops along the way, but that's the very basic setup. Okay, horizontal going into your pool and rockets launch on the vertical. Okay, so that's the way to remember that. So your water is going to be launching back to the pool through the vertical pipe. Water comes in, water goes out, gets distributed through your multi-port into your filter. And in this case, it's a sand filter. The sand scrubs your water and then it comes back out of the filter and makes a journey back to your pool. So when you're looking at all this pipe work and you're trying to figure out what's what, just remember at the end of the day, it all has to converge into the one uh, pump here. Okay. So if you follow the line that we now know is your intake all the way back, we know that all the valves, no matter how many times it manifolds or tees out into a whole bunch of different pipes, we know that this whole system, this here, this here, this and this, all these pipes are on the vacuum side of your pump because they all converge into one pipe that goes into the horizontal aspect of your, of your pump. And then the pipe that comes, on the, uh, comes out of the vertical side of your pump, okay, is gonna come out, go into what is your multi-port, and your multi-port is what directs the flow of your water, whether or not it's going into your filter, bypassing the filter, or just dumping water. Um, and you'll never want to depress this valve down while the pump is running because it can cause problems. The one single pipe that's coming out of the right side of your multi-port is your backwash line, which you can see off there in the distance. Sometimes you can see the end of that line, sometimes you can't. If you ever see water dripping out of the end of your backwash line while the pump is running and your valve is set into filter, that means that the spider gasket inside this multi-port is beginning to fail and you'll want to contact your service provider so that they can go ahead and change that out for you. The two pipes closest to the pump or on the left side of your multi-port are responsible for sending water directly to the filter, back from the filter. So this is going into the multi-port to your filter, clean water coming out, going up through a check valve. This allows water to only go one direction. And when the system stops, the water tries to come back down and this valve holds it in place. It goes through an open Jandy valve, okay? Perpendicular to the pipe is open. In line with the pipe parallel means closed, and that is opposite.
to a number of different valves, most valves that you'll find in like Ace Hardware, so on and so forth. And if we follow the path of the water, we have a choice of going to the left or off to the right. And you can see here that this triangle says closed, which means if the water were to try to come up and go to the right, it would not be able to because the valve is indicating that we want to send it up this pipe, which eventually takes the water to the top of the roof, warms the water, and then the water comes back downhill through this partially open valve and back to the pool. If I were to take this valve and rotate it, I would be bypassing the solar altogether. And now the water comes straight out of the filter, comes up, tries to go to the solar, can't do it because it's off. And then the water follows in the direction of the valve in which way it's pointing. And you can see when I re-rotate that valve, when I rotate that valve again, send everything up to the roof, that our flow indicator says, yep, I've got water going through me and up to the roof. So as we look at the overall system now, being a little bit more familiar with it. <laughs> All right, stand by. Okay. Now we're trying to make everything a little bit more quiet here. Um, what was happening, the pump just uh, ramped up its speed. It was kind of slowly pressurizing itself, uh, not to force water up to the roof first thing in the morning too quickly. So it starts by just running real slowly, in, at least in how this is programmed. And then after a while, uh, the pump ramps up and starts sending a full volume of water up to the roof. Okay, so you can see that the pipe doesn't just go to the filter here. It, there's, a little, there's a little separation and then it goes up through here. Okay, and what that is, is this is a chlorinating line. Okay, so it sends water up, down, and through our chlorination unit here. And inside here, there's a bunch of chlorine sticks. And sometimes you don't have this down in the room. Sometimes you'll have a blue and a white floater floating around in your pool and three or four sticks in that floater. In this case, lots of kids use this pool, so we don't have the floater up there. We put it down in the room where they can't get curious and mess around with it. Comes out of the chlorinating unit, the chlorinator, and goes back into the pool, way down there. Okay, so we... Hey! I'm trying to make a video over here. All right, so then, uh, again, just a quick overview. We look at everything all at once. It can, and believe me, pump rooms can get infinitely more complicated than this. Uh, but this is a good medium ground. When we're looking at all these pipes, at first it might be a little bit confusing, a little bit daunting to try to figure it all out. Put your hand on the pump. Start from there. Okay? Your horizontal line coming out of the pump is going to be suction. If that one line separates into 20 different pipes, it means that you've got 20 different pipes on your suction side, okay? And it's just at that point figuring out uh, where those pipes go to the pool to bring water from the pool into the pump. Your vertical line is your discharge always coming out. If you've got four different separations, then you know that the pump is sending water to four different directions. In this case, it's the chlorinator. In that case, it's up to the solar or directly back to the pool. And talking about how the pump gets its electricity, a lot of the times the older pumps will have an intermatic timer with an on tab and an off tab. And since this pool has a variable speed pump, the timer mechanism takes place in this little computer in here and we set our programs here. If this was an older pump, an unenergy efficient pump, then we would have our tabs there. So this box is now being used as just a junction box so that the power to the pump connects here but isn't activated on and off through here. We talked about this particular pool not having an autofill because it's an older pool, so what we did 
is we tapped into the main line of this cottage and connected it to a timer. And then we pick an appropriate time based on how much water this how much water this pool loses through watershed and or if there's any leaks. And once a day, for five minutes, this timer turns on and injects water into the return system of this pool. And it fills itself. So if you have an older pool, it's one of the things that you can talk to your service provider about. And they can plumb it into your irrigation line and they can give you a dedicated station that allows you to fill your pool so that you don't have to um, fill it constantly with the pool and run the risk of forgetting to turn that hose off, which I have done several times. This pool is unique in the way that you can, this is generally what's going on under the ground, but which we can see here because this is an above the ground pool, above, above the ground, it's an above ground pool. And the return that I showed you up on the pool side, the port in the wall, okay, that's what it looks like under the ground in most circumstances. And in this pool, you can see that that is your plumbing, the skeletal frame of the plumbing going back to the pool. Or, I'm sorry, going back to the pool pump. So you've got these three lines coming in from the pool, going into your intake through the pump and being distributed back into these lines here that return back into your pool. Okay, now this is actually your vacuum line, okay? So that's still actually part of your suction. And this is Roja the Great, fearless cat that never stops feeding. This one return here separates and follows the path of some of our suction lines, but uh, ultimately ends up going through the wall of the pool. And that was the port that I just showed you a moment ago. And this here is not part of the pool system. There's, uh, this is an irrigation uh, solenoid and it's leaking here, so that'll get fixed up. In any case, um, one of the things that happens is uh, we'll uh, take this uh, a pump and, and periodically this pump basket here, okay, which you can't really see because of the light, um, will collect material from the pool, from the skimmer, items that are small enough to go through the basket come down through the pipe and get caught in this basket here, all right? And if you were to open this up without shutting any valves, that's what would end up happening. And so this is a place where a lot of times people will start panicking, trying to figure out what to do. But remember, if you follow your pipe all the way back to your first valve and you shut that valve, then it isolates at least one end of the situation which is your intake side, but don't forget, we've still got a whole side of the pump from the pool back to the pump, right? In this case, all the water stopped because we've put check valves in the line, which means again, water can only go up and when the pump is off, it tries to settle back down. If this valve wasn't here, all the water would come backwards through the filter and right back out the pump basket. Okay, so then we take the pump basket kind of get it a little bit cleaned up, doesn't have to be perfect. And then that hole right there is always facing the intake side of the pump, meaning the pool, right? So it has to be facing the pipe. If you don't, then you've got no clear entrance for the debris to come in. It would hit this basket and accumulate back in here, which is not what you would want. Okay, so you go here, take some of the water out, pump basket goes in. And by the way, this is a really quick overview. Um, if you're a homeowner, uh, it, it's it, unless you're really familiar on, on uh, your own system and where the valves are, 
Um, it probably is best not to try this without getting an overview directly from your service provider, okay? If I didn't have this check valve here, I would have to close this check valve, and I would have to close this valve here from the chlorinator. This chlorinator also has a check valve in line, again, to help water only go one direction. The reason why we put this check valve here, which is a particular type of check valve that is chemical resistant, is so that the, the chemicals can't flow backward from this chlorinator into the pump and cause damage to the pump. Another thing that we did to help alleviate some of that concern is we've put a very steep pipe going up so that the accumulated material from this chlorinator, even though that some of these have check valves in them, isn't gonna travel all the way uphill. Maybe some of the caustic environment, the aggressive environment will stay right around in here and not actually get back to the pump, okay? So we turn our valve back on and everything is good on the discharge side. Remembering that our valve here is shut and now open and we're ready to turn our unit back on.